Hello, welcome back to the Groove Agent 5 tutorial series. Today we're talking about the pitch envelope and the, the settings specific to it. If you need a, a, a bigger overview of envelopes in general inside Groove Agent, I'll put a link to that video above. Most of the individual options in the pitch page are pretty straightforward. We've got this ride bell sound on C1 and I can change the course tuning and fine tune it gets us one semitones worth of increase. Random literally does that if I set it to 100% and start playing C1s. And the rest of the controls we've already seen in earlier videos, this is where we draw ourselves an envelope. At the moment it doesn't do anything. Introduce an envelope amount. And now it does do something. We have independent controls for pitch bend up and down. So if I set it down to minus one, but up to like plus 12, and now uh, turn the pitch bend wheel all the way down, that's one semitone, and all the way up, that's one octave. Just reset them. MIDI controller should be straightforward, but I think there's a bug in it. If I show you this um, Djembe A mute pad over here and set the MIDI controller to the modulation wheel. So if I play a C, C sharp one, and I'm just moving the modulation wheel and we're changing pitch as you'd expect to see. If I search for that, this I'm just gonna show you what I think is this bug. If I search for Djembe, A mute, there it is. If I drag that sound onto the very same pad, everything else exactly the same, and set the pitch back to MIDI controller modulation. Now the controller wheel doesn't work. It seems that if you drag an instrument onto a pad, you can't assign MIDI controller mapping to it from that point onwards. It works absolutely fine for samples. doesn't work for any instruments that I've got on my system. So I don't know what that's all about. But you can, you can understand the concept, even though it might be on my system, I don't know. But just beware that the, there seems to be some kind of problem with this page. I'm not actually going to talk about the hold functionality at the moment. This it. it what it basically does is freezes the current controller change value when you're playing patterns or um, uh, note repeat selections. Well, we don't, we haven't dealt with patterns and note repeat yet, so we'll come to that maybe in a, a later video. But it's it's pretty fringe stuff. It's about freezing the controller value when a, a larger kind of pattern is being played in the background. Now the good stuff on this page, I've left this till last because it's the the most fun bit really. Key range allows us to specify a, a range of pads over which this sound will apply. And the reason I've chosen this dual djembe preset is because we actually have some of this baked into the preset. On this A sharp four pad over here, we have a mute bass. So let's find that on the keyboard. There it is. And you can see that we've got other versions of mute bass, each with a different semitone offset, going all the way down to minus nine and all the way up to plus 14. So if I play, there's my A sharp four, watch the keyboard at the bottom. So those are all of the semitone offsets being applied to the original sample, that's the core sample. It's the only one that doesn't have a semitone offset written on it. The key range you can see down here, the low key is C sharp four, and the upper key is C6, which is there. And every pad that has a key range pitch offset applied to it gets the little um, double quaver symbol. Now if I click on A4, this is completely empty because there isn't a sound actually assigned to A4. 
what we're getting there is this sound is being rooted basically to this pad and being played a semitone lower. There's absolutely nothing stopping us dropping a sound onto that pad. So if I pick this clap sound up, drop it on there. Now when I play A4, you're going to get both of those sounds. There's also a very heavy delay being applied to the sound, possibly confusing stuff a little bit, so I'll take all of the auxiliary sense away. So we're hearing the clap and the original mute bass sound. If I mute the, mo the mute bass pad, we just hear the clap. And even though the pitch range is still assigned to A4, when that data is being routed to A sharp 4, where the, the core sound is stored, that pad's muted so you don't hear it. Now there's another feature to do with key ranges, which is fixed pitch. In order to demonstrate this, I'm going to drag another copy of this clap onto G sharp 4. So these two pads both have the clap sound. And if I bring the mute bass back in, you'll hear the the semitone difference between the two mute bass sounds that's underneath the clap. Just as a matter of interest, you can toggle the mutes the other way around as well. If I mute the pads, the mute bass sound is still getting through underneath because that, that sound is actually living on A sharp 4. So muting A4 doesn't prevent the sound being rooted back to it. Now if I go back over to the, the bass sound and select fixed pitch, now both of these pads, in fact all of these tonal pads, are going to sound exactly the same. You can layer any number of these key range pads on top of each other, I would advise caution. <laughs> it's going to get so confusing eventually, you've got so many different pads crossing over each other. There's no way that Groove Agent can make very much sense of it. If I select this C sharp 4 for instance, and send that key range up an octave, this sound is now picking up this loop as well. So if I play this pad, we've currently got the clap still muted, but you're going to get the mute bass from A sharp 4 and the djembe from C4. But you can't tell that it's got two sounds rooted to it because you just get the same symbol. The only way you can actually identify how many sounds are rooted to this pad is to actively look for it. If you right click on the pad, then you can look at chromatically mapped from, and that will tell you all of the other pads that are being activated when you click this one. But like I say, the functionality might be there, but just be very careful about how kind of fancy you get with this stuff. It just gets so difficult to manage that I try to avoid having multiple chromatically mapped pads uh, heading to the same destination. It's just it's too, too, too much for my brain to handle. So that's the pitch envelope page dealt with. Hope you enjoyed the video, found it useful. If you did, please subscribe, hit notifications. You'll find out when the next episode in this series comes along. Hope to see you then, thanks a lot.